morning, yeah. sir. How are you? Good. <laughs> you want to sit down on the hard chairs or go over and Why sit in the soft? Hello, Mr. Vice President. Okay. You apologize to NACO for me? Yes, I did. Okay. I really your name. Actually, that. somebody already did it ahead of me, too. There is no well, Please, <laughs> we, we just have a few minutes because we're doing a, in a meeting in there, but, uh, and I know you've been <clears throat> well briefed by Bill Johnson Anders. George and I are delighted that you're here. And uh, I know that while most of you, your faces kind of are very familiar, that we have two travelers who came, Mr. Goodsell from Boston and Mr. Montalbano from uh, all the way to Miami. Uh, were there any other distant travelers? Or That's it. But uh, I won't try to plow any ground that's already been disked and harrowed by uh, the briefers here, but perhaps maybe you have a question or two. We're I'm sure you get it. We're very, uh, very excited and very high in, on this plan that we've proposed. Uh, I originally suggested it in a meeting with uh, Lopez Portillo back when the old problem of immigration was so great, and it just seemed to me <coughs> that the great cost, the great problem that we have with the the illegal immigration and the people seeking a better life who come here as they have in the past, that maybe they'd be more content to stay in their own countries if they had better opportunities in their own countries. So that's what created the whole idea. And if someone has a question. Mr. President, you, uh, you approved the opening to Cuba that uh, Secretary of State Haig had with their, their Vice President in Mexico City. Yes. Uh, now that that uh, opening uh, seems to have been made, uh, will we have further contacts, diplomatic contacts with your approval, open, not secret, with Well, Cuba? let me avoid in a little bit answering because I'm always reluctant to, uh, to, to speak out about uh, options and things that we might or might not do. But let me just say that I think I indicated or intended to indicate yesterday in my remarks that those states that I say have returned to a kind of colonialism by aligning themselves uh, with the Soviet Union, that they belong back in the Americas and they would be welcomed back at any time that they wanted to return and become uh, once again <coughs> states of the Americas of this hemisphere. So what will that will lead to or how we'll get anything about that, why well, I'd rather not say. Mr. President, I know it was in disrepute a few years ago, and yet the phrase uh, having been in disrepute was proven true in Southeast Asia with regard to dominoes. Uh, I don't think you can stand by and see now with the base that's been established in one country in Nicaragua and the all-out effort that is being made in El Salvador, that is that's not just a, a ragged bunch in the hills. Uh, we've got some weapons that are uh, staging a little country revolution. And that's a very sophisticated operation. And you look at the surrounding countries, the situation of Honduras, Costa Rica, and Guatemala, and I think you have to see there are dominoes there that could fall. And I think, we've, I think it would be the most short-sighted thing in the world for us not to recognize who is back of and promoting that, and to believe that if they succeed there, why well, that's the only intention they've got in this hemisphere. How serious would the fall of those dominoes be if it did happen uh, for the security of the United States? <coughs> well, if all of the Americas for that matter, because we find for the first time there really is a common bond between us and almost all of our Latin American neighbors down there with regard to this moving into the, to Central America. First of all, it's only 50 miles or so from, well, I don't know the mileage, but I know that some of you would pick me up if I give it, but let me say they're very close, very close to the Panama Canal, and of course there is the thing I mentioned yesterday about the importance of our, our shipping. I think many of us can remember back to World War II when German submarines were sinking 
tankers and ships bringing supplies to this country within sight of land. People could stand on shore in Florida and see the, the ships sinking, the trade routes coming that, that close. But yes, you, you could envision, uh, look at the location of Guatemala, for example, its proximity to the, to the uh, Mexican oil fields. What would our position be if someday uh, it was Mexico that was threatened? at its southern border. And we would be facing the debate of, well, should we go to their aid, or is that none of our business? Should we stand back and, and then wait until it's at a 2,000 mile border in the south of our country? I think that we, we have a government there that evidently is confident enough of its support of the people that it is willing to submit to an election that has asked the others to join in that election, to cease fire and participate in a legitimate election, and they refused, which to me indicates that they must know they don't have the support of the majority of the people. And uh, <clears throat> I just think that this was started in a previous administration, this help to, to that government, and we have carried it on, and I think we, we should continue to. Mr. President, the, the economic aspect of this policy is fairly clear, but, but it's not as clear as the security aspect of what you intend to do to prevent this domino theory from, from being implemented in that part of the world. How far are you prepared to go? Well, one of the things that we, we believe is that by correcting the social and economic inequities that make certainly certain portions of the population of many of those countries uh, open to the promises from outside, the subversion of telling them there is a better life for them if they follow that other philosophy and do what they're doing in El Salvador. If we eliminate those or reduce them vastly, I think that is a very practical way. Now, I know that's not a short-sighted or a short-term thing for what you're saying there, but uh, the, the things that we outlined yesterday, we think are the answer to, uh, to help them with the things they need. And it is a government that we believe will have a democratic promise for its people. Um, I, I hesitate to say what we, we will or won't do, except that I believe that the old historic image of uh, the big colossus of the North and gunboat diplomacy and so forth is still ingrained in many of those people, and that uh, not even our friends of today would want to see that kind of intervention on our part. So we're going to have to do all the things we can do except that. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, would you respond positively please. to uh, the offer by President Lopez Portillo to act this kind of a debate? <coughs> I ask whether you would respond positively to the offer by President Lopez Portillo to act as kind of a mediator or a buffer in, between the United States and Cuba on one and Nicaragua on the other and Salvador on the third? Well, this is something that we have to look at and study. He has <coughs> sent a letter which is being translated and, and which we're going to have to study and see. I think he's very sincere in that. And uh, I do believe that we have a better relationship with him with Mexico than this country's ever had before. And uh, if there is a practical way in which he can be of help in this, uh, we should welcome it. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, just as you came in, I think Mr. Enders was discussing the information and so on that we have about the sh shipment of arms to El Salvador. And the question that come up is why the administration did not reveal this information and let the American public know more about it. I think one of the big problems you face is the uh, convincing the American public that there is a problem in El Salvador. And I wonder if we could have some, some thoughts on this. I guess I'm, I'm 
find a discovery. Every time I come into a room like this, I know I've interrupted somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to carry on. <laughs> well, one of the problems with releasing information of the, of the kind that you've asked is you can't do that without compromising your sources of information. And uh, so you just have to stand here and uh, fight the propaganda, which is worldwide and well organized, and I think has been very evident even in our own media, that it has been effective in uh, making it sound as if once again we're interfering in some kind of a local dispute, and usually they make it sound as if we're interfering on the wrong side. Uh, that is not accidental. That is a well-planned, well-financed, worldwide propaganda effort. But to answer specifically uh, about the weapons, then gets into an area in which, as I say, we compromise sources that we can't afford to compromise. But believe me, uh, we're sure of our facts. All right? Introduce two remarkable Americans, John and Doris Diekman. Uh, President Reagan, how are you? Nice to meet you, Mr. President. John and Doris are here on behalf, behalf of the Rise Syndrome Foundation. That's a disease that strikes uh, young children and uh, takes many lives each year. They and two other parents in 1975 who lost young children to Rye Syndrome decided to do something about it and they have started this foundation. There are no paid staff. It's all volunteers. It goes to the heart of what you're talking about, Mr. President. In fact, last year you wrote a letter to their meeting which uh, has uh, tremendously increased their uh, participation of it. And it's mainly educational to make doctors and people aware of the spread disease and, and what they can do to uh, uh, ameliorate. I think it's a wonderful thing that you've done. Am I correct in understanding that there has been some breakthrough made now that offers <clears throat> hope? Well, I don't know, Mr. President, if that's, if that's happened. I think there are there are some real serious suspicions now, and there are some research projects ongoing, uh, both federally and privately, that tend to indicate uh, down the pike, not too far, well, we should be on top of this thing. But it, as the Congressman has said, as I said, it's parents, and it's a parent participation group, and uh, they're trying to do it without outside assistance. And they're gonna do it. That's the way it's gonna be. Well, I think that's wonderful. I'd like to present to you uh, our response to your letter. It's in this brochure, which was an, an inspirational statement to us in Indianapolis, and also for whatever use you might be able to use uh, a lapel pin, and uh, perhaps you would uh, consider wearing that at some uh, future news conference. Maybe that might help once in a while. Well, we'd appreciate it. Thank Glad you very much. I'd be very proud to. I appreciate it, too. Right. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Yeah. My mother. And the other good man. We do. Thank we you, do. Mr. President. We do. Thank you, sir. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And I have a pen for you that I understand is a little late. Signature pen from the bill. But that's all right. I'm glad he did. Well, and uh, fair exchange, uh, this is from the U.S. Historical Society. Uh, they commissioned uh, Matty Old, the silversmith to Colonia Williamsburg, to do this on the wall and stick. Uh, we're going to have a limited edition. This is number one with your name on it. And uh, in memory of uh, the 250th uh, anniversary of the birth of the president. Well, so that's very handsome, and I thank you very much. it every day. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. I don't want to hold it. Well, thank, thank you very much.
very pleased that you have the opportunity to be with you here today. And I want to offer you a token of my own personal esteem, which is the map of Arizona, with all of the counties inlaid with the turquoise. And next time you see Edie and Royal, yes. it'd be very pleased to see you with that. This morning, the chief of the Hobie tribe, which makes the only authentic Kachina doll, this is an eagle, I've uh, asked me to present this to you. There's a story behind it that's on a piece of paper that you'll be able to take a look at at another time. It's a beautiful piece, and it comes from the, to show you their affection, my affection, the nation's affection for you, Mr. President. And uh, so I hope you'll enjoy that. Oh, listen, that, yes, I'm one bit of admirer of these. Seen it's, collections. It's the prettiest one I've ever seen. It really is. And this, of course, when you from the state where legally this has been made a necktie. That's correct. That's correct. No one you can say you can't well. come in here without a necktie if you've got one of these. Next, next time you board a horse, you'll look great. <clears throat> say that.